everyone. I am live because, well, why not? I'm off work, so amazing. And I'm sitting at my crafty desk because really, I've just got to do it in the morning. So I don't know what, I'm just playing. And I tried to start a little later this morning because I know that some of you guys are in different time zones, so you might not be on. I'm gonna give you all a minute, a couple of minutes to jump on here. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to craft and play. So I have a few supplies on my table. I have an alphabet, an alpha set, and labels that were sent to me in Happy Mail. Hey, Vicki, welcome, welcome, good morning. Um, so yeah, I have alpha and labels. These are from Rhonda and my Happy Mail. And then I have these, um, I don't think this is the right one. I had some file folders. I miscut a couple of file folders when I was making journals for the craft fair, so I saved them. And I think I'm just gonna use this to make some labels. So um, this used to be barely art glue. Um, and then I decided to fill my glue bottle with Lineco instead. So I tore off the label this morning of the Barely Art Glue. This was the old label and I put a sticker on it. I want to make a label for it um, so that it says Lineco because a lot of times people ask me what I'm using and that way they'll see that it's Lineco. So I've got that ready to go. I already had this journal one ready so I wanted to make some of these labels so that's one thing I want to do it won't take very long with this paper and then I have my color wheel out I thought it would be fun so I have three colors of ink they're all primary they're Liquitex and I thought we could play with color theory and the color wheel for those who maybe aren't that comfortable with it or haven't played with it before so I thought that was something we could kind of play with I had made some paper with this only once before and I was just using straight water and the colors I didn't mix them at all but of course because I saturated this watercolor paper with water they really spread and I just liked the way that looked and I haven't had an opportunity to play with them since so I thought I would play with these again. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but um, we might make some cards. Sky's the limit. I don't know. First, I just want to make some labels to get going because I need I need my Lion Co. one. And so I have these different labels. I was so excited to get these. And yeah, I think I'll just use, I think this one will wrap around the bottle just fine. Now this one, let's see, it should be fine to put it on this. So, um, how are you doing, Vicki? Good morning. I got your card. It was so beautiful. I think I shared it in a video already. It was so, so pretty. Thank you so much for sending it to me. I just love getting cards in the mail. I, um, this afternoon, well, probably before this afternoon, we'll see, time flies, um, but I am going to be sitting down myself and getting some cards ready to send out. I, it's something I always need to do, <laughs> and I don't mind. I love it. I mean, obviously, I'm a card maker, right? Okay. Okay. Ooh, look at that. So that stamped beautifully, the first go. Never been used before. This is hot off the press. It's from 2015. Um, it's Like I said, it's from my friend Rhonda. I don't know, it's called Tiny Tags, Little Labels and Greetings. Yes, I'm really excited about this. This was a duplicate copy that she had. So let's stamp out a few of those. Oh, nice. That's nice. Are you getting relaxation? 
it's always nice to visit. We um, drove up to be with, I got to see two of my brothers. Um, on Monday, we drove um, up to the Dallas area and I got to see my niece some of my nieces and nephews and it was it was really nice it was so rejuvenating um because i haven't seen a couple of them and since 2020 or 2019 i love traveling i like being away from home and I always like coming home <laughs> okay so I wanted a few like journal tags that I could put inside of my journals so that's what I'm making here I need just one really that says line co which I already put on a block I was debating whether I should go live or not I mean I just didn't have like a whole lot of plans I was just playing hey Linda welcome Oh, good. You're just chilling. That's exactly what you should do. <laughs> For sure. We all need more chill time. I am doing the same thing. Hey, Mary C. I got your box yesterday. Thank you. Um, I was going to save it and put it under the tree. And I... I don't know. I opened it. <laughs> I saved it for half the day. And then I was like, I think I'll just open it. <laughs> Thank you so much. The Van Gogh book is amazing. Um, and Enzi loved the dragon book. He loves, he loved the Harry Potter things you sent him. He loved the dragon book. You just made him so happy. And Carmen was all about the stencils. Oh, yes. And my sister-in-law got her a diamond. My brother and sister-in-law got her this diamond kit. Uh, oh, boy. I'm messing it up already. It's like where you glue all the little plastic diamonds down. She made. And the ones that she gave her, it's a kit where you can make stickers. She made like four stickers yesterday. She was just hooked. I called her the Diamond Dazzler. Hey there, Noreen. I'm going to tell you that I wasn't going to go live. I was like, you know, I just posted a video this morning, which I did, you guys, if y'all want to see a card video from me. Um, it's live on my channel. I was like, ah, you know, I just posted a video this morning. Maybe I shouldn't go live. And then I saw that Noreen had commented, and I was like, ooh, I know Noreen's been missing my live videos and she might want to catch one and it seems like she might be online right now. So <laughs> Noreen, I did it for you. Diamond dots. Thank you, Vicki. Yes, she got her a diamond dot kit. Oh, by the end of the day yesterday, I had nicknamed her the Diamond Dazzler. She's just making little mini masterpieces and loving it. It's so cute. And it was funny because I was like, oh, I don't know if I have the patience for that. And she's like, but you make little, you make cards. You make things that take a lot of patience. I was like, yeah, it's just different because you're just, I mean, I get used to make jewelry and I guess that takes a lot of patience too. <laughs> oh, thanks, Vicki. Yeah, it was sweet. It was, I had a lot of um I had a lot of fun just making that card like just it felt so relaxing just sitting there coloring and making that card I really enjoyed it I love scrappy tells you know it's such a mixed bag going into the new year like stepping down from the design teams and going into the new year um without being on one because they brought me a lot of joy they really did I love the products I love the companies you know I chose well you know I getting to work with Sabrina and Jamie from not too shabby was just a dream 
but I, you know, you have to follow your gut. You have to follow your instinct. And my instinct told me I had to let it go, at least for now. It doesn't mean I can't return or uh, apply again and hopefully, you know, return to those teens later. But I tried to go against my gut and it only lasted like two weeks. And I was like, nope, I really do have to, I have to step down as upsetting as that was for me. I didn't want to, but at the same time, I can't go against my instincts. My dad always taught me since I was little to listen to my instincts and honor my instincts and don't go against them. And it has literally saved my life <laughs> doing that um, a few times, a few times. Because he used to tell me, you know, you have to listen to your instincts. You have to listen to your tummy when I was little. He's like, what's your tummy tell you? You got to listen to your tummy. And he's like, and I tell my kids exactly what he used to tell me. It doesn't have to make sense. That's what he used to tell me. He's like, maybe somebody makes you feel uncomfortable and you don't know why because they seem really nice and lots of people like them and you know, you don't know why that person makes you feel uncomfortable, but they do. And he taught me like, you have to, you have to go with it. You have to, you have to listen to your tummy. And, um, so that's what I had to do with this as well is I just had to follow my instincts, listen to my tummy. My tummy was telling me it was time to, to bow out. And so, you know, I don't know why, but it was time. I mean, I know why I've got a lot going on. We're getting our kids back into, um, extracurricular activities. My son has weekly doctor's appointments that, um, used to be telemedicine and now, you know, they won't be, they're going to be in office. So that's a weekly appointment. And, you know, I just, life is just picking up, um, again. And this was something that I could, I had a choice, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, sometimes our life is really busy and we feel like we don't have a choice but in this way I did so I chose to slow things down a little bit bring more balance look at that oh my goodness Rhonda will probably catch us later she's on the west coast so she's probably still sleeping but Rhonda I love these I love these labels and now I have all these journal labels all right let's get this line co one out and then we'll move on from the labels. I'm not gonna do a marathon live like I did the other day. <laughs> I was live for three hours, which was a total blast. I mean, <laughs> no regrets, but I thought, well, I'll just do a little bit of live today because I'm just playing. Um, I don't have anything that I have to do. I don't have too much that I need to do. I wanna make I can't decide if I'm gonna make cards or a journal for my next door neighbor, um, but I want to make one of those for her. I just gotta figure out which one I'm gonna do. All right, so now I have a Lineco label to go on my glue bottle. I just need to grab some packing tape. I'm not gonna do that on this live. I'm not going to put it on, on this live only because packing tape, it's just so loud and annoying <laughs> peeling it off, but I am really excited about these labels and I got to use that folder that I had creased and I had folded it the wrong way and I could have probably refolded it, but I don't mind. I like using it for these kinds of projects. So that's that. Yay. We made some labels. Cool. Oh, you know what? Let me see if I can easily get to it. Oh, look what I found at Walmart. This stuff is so cool, you guys. This is the Folk Art brand. It's glitterific. Heck yeah. And 
and I don't like glitter. Like, I don't like bottles of loose glitter, but I love glitter. And this one's nice because it has like um, really large pieces as well as small. And so it's almost like holographic. It dries nicely. So what I did is I just grabbed a printable and this was my test and I just kind of put a little in different places. I really like it. It feels a little pricey for the brand, but I think it'll be worth it and I'll use it like there's plenty here to use. Um, so they had one that had like a paint color to it. Well, they had them in different colors. I just got the gold because it felt most universal. But yeah, I'm excited about this, being able to add this to my projects. So I'm going to be adding Glitterific to my projects going forward. I'm sure of it. But yeah, I wanted to make myself an ephemera folder. Let me, let me see. Is that something y'all wanna see? Do y'all wanna see me play around making an ephemera folder? I have to see if I can get. So I saved my mushroom boxes from the produce, <laughs> you know, from when we buy fresh mushrooms at the supermarket. And like, right now I have all these dirty blocks now and I can just put them all in a mushroom box, put them off to the side. And after this live, I can clean them right up very handy. I like having my mushroom boxes in the craft room. So yay for these. All right, making sure I'm still alive. The other day it kicked me off and I'm not sure why, <laughs> but it did. Okay, let me see if I have these boxes or books. I sure do. Okay, I bought this. This is a, I believe it's a six by eight. Let's see. Oh, well, no, nine by eight. Um, and I bought it. Now here I was using it for like stamped images that I had stamped and cut out, but really this is not, these should be with the stamp sets. That's how I best like them. I, I don't want them in here. Now this is just like labels um, or sentiments from a Stampin' Up set that I have where you can stamp it out. You get one big stamp that has all these different sentiments and then you have one big die and it cuts them all out. But um, yeah, I kinda wanna make this a ephemera folder to hold like my printables and stuff, like labels and different things. So I'm gonna file these away with my stamps is where these will go. Okay. Hey, Amalia. Welcome. Happy holidays to you. So, um, yeah, I, okay. The only thing, so I think this is going to make a good ephemera folder, but it's so loose up here. So one of the things I was kind of wanting to play with is figuring out a way to maybe I have two ideas. Oh, that's a good idea, Vicki. Yeah, you know, I have some of those small stamp sets too from like their paper pumpkin and then I get them too from Echo Park and their kids, they've been sending stamp sets. Oh, Noreen, you ask about this and I set it to the side to show you. The thankful and blessed that I used was from Echo Park. It was from a um, card kit. I know you asked about that a long time ago, and I don't know if I ever told you in the comments, but that's where that's from. It's from Echo Park. And I know sometimes they sell that stuff separately. I set that aside for you just the other day. 
so I could share it with you. Okay, so my ideas about this to make it a little less, like I don't want my stuff just flying out of these tops. So this is wallpaper. I was thinking, well, this has some tackiness to it. So maybe having like paper inside of here will help. And then um, I was thinking about making like a top so that it can have something to cover it. So let's just play with this for a minute. Yeah, I knew you did. And I had meant to tell you before now where that came from and I wasn't sure if I did. So I came across it, I put it on my desk to share with you. All right, let's see, let's cut this down to four. Going this way and six. All right. Because this is, you know, intended for four by six photos. So that's why I cut it down to that. Okay. I think it's gonna stick there pretty well. Let's do another. What's fun is I could do, I mean, this isn't my favorite paper in the world, but it's gonna work for this right now, for this purpose. Testing, testing, right? All right. I think that's gonna help make things stick. Let's test it out. So this is what happens right now. <laughs> If this gets turned the wrong direction, which can totally help happen around <laughs> here. So let's see if this helps. I mean, it's, it does, it helps. Well, I don't know if those were spread out the same. It does help, but I do think I want to add some sort of way to add a sealant for these. Now, I can do that. I can make a little fold over for this one. This one might be a little trickier. I am, Amalia, I'm doing collabs in 2022. I have a collab that I'm starting in 2022, and it's a hashtag collab that anybody can join in on. Um, it's called Old Plus New 2022, um, and it's a monthly collab, and um, it's just about using the idea of something old and something new, and, uh, you know, um, definitely encouraging others to use what's in their stash and maybe try new techniques, different things like that, but um, have eight people who are going to be a part of the collab team, but then it's open to everyone. And I will even have guests um, from time to time who will feature. So you're welcome to join us. Um, I will have a information video about it next week. And the first week in January, I'll release the prompt. Okay, let me try that. Um, yeah, that's one thing I'm looking forward to personally by kind of stepping down from the design teams. You know, I was a little sad. And um, so, yeah, one of the ideas, so this had a crease in it. I'm trying to score it an inch. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to collabs. I am like, I was a little sad to step down from the design team, but I've been putting a positive spin on it for myself and definitely thinking that I it will free up me up more to do collaborations, which is cool. And I want to do that. All right. So one idea I had Noreen was to take a separate piece use like um, a double-sided tape back here, tape it down, and then that way I would have a flap 
This one though, I'm a little, I guess I just have to use a thinner piece to secure this one down. This is all play. All right, let's check this out. Hey Susie, welcome, welcome. Okay, so it's kind of a little longer than six. Oh cool, Vicki, that's where you're at is Illinois. Awesome. Okay. If this kind of, if my prototype works, I can go back and make this with paper that I really like. I mean, I really like this paper, this one. Um, but yeah, if this prototype works, then I can go back and be more selective with my paper and make it pretty. <laughs> and make it pretty. All right, let's score this. So this is like two inches. I'm gonna score add an inch and a half. Me and my two inch strips of paper, card making magic. All right. So if I do that, you know what I'm thinking? I could then, well, I'll have to find all my, I only have two pieces, or it's only gonna be enough for one. But this Velcro, I could put a Velcro dot at the top of this. And that way it would shut and close. So let me grab some double-sided tape. Oh yeah. One of my very close friends of many, many years lives in Illinois. And then I have lots of crafty friends there now. When I was daydreaming about a meetup, like a crafty retreat kind of meetup, I thought Illinois would be a great place because I'm getting to know a lot of people in Illinois. Okay, so see, that seals that on, and that's not, this is cherry tape. It's not gonna come off at all. Okay, so let's move this up here, turn it around. Okay, just to make it double-sided so it's pretty on both sides. Okay, and that's kind of fun because then I can tuck my ephemera on both sides. So I like these labels. I'm gonna have to do this, but with like some of my favorite papers. I just wanted to play for a minute. Okay, and then I'm gonna, this is how I like to do my Velcro is I like to go ahead and stick them together. Just pop that right in the middle. I know that like lots of junk journalers make folios for their ephemera. Um, but they like sew it and I just, and they make like a beautiful journal. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I wanted to make something quick. I bought this album from Spellbinders and one of like their warehouse clearance sales for like a dollar or three dollars. I think maybe it was three dollars. And it's so sturdy and it's so nice. And I bought it for this purpose, actually. I mean, I knew if it didn't work out for this that I could use it um, for a photo album. So like, I knew no matter what, it would all work out. Um, but I had this in mind. I think what I am gonna like, however, is maybe two pieces of Velcro. Like, I don't like how these corners are sticking up. I'm not too crazy about that. 
So I might have to put the Velcro on the corners or something. All right, let's figure out this bottom one. All right, so here's where this one opens. I'm gonna have to cover a little bit. That's just a little short. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to cover a little bit of the top just so I have a place for my adhesive. I can definitely cut it down some too. I was actually thinking about, okay, so this paper, I just fell in love with it. This is from DCWV from one of the collections that I used in a live actually last week. And um, I was thinking, oh, I could use those labels that Rhonda sent me and recreate this. I just need to stamp flowers in the labels and I could kind of recreate this paper. That was one of the ideas I had. So many ideas. Just need more time. Let's do one and a half. All right, and this time, I'm gonna score this. on this side. Hey Kim, welcome. I'll score it at half an inch. I'm just playing around. Right now I'm making, I'm using a photo album. Okay, and these are the four by six sheets and I'm converting it into an ephemera holder for myself by trial and error. Okay, so this one, yeah, it's gonna need to flip upward so I can get down there. Let's see if I can cut another bit of this. It doesn't look like it's not quite eight inches. It'll be fine. This is all just, this is all just prototype here. So four by six, just like a photograph. I'll do it like that, pop those in there. Okay. Then I can put all these sentiments in here. Oh, you know what? I have a bunch of sentiments that my friend Mary, Jadette lady sent me. And I've kept them in the bag right here in front of me and used them, but now I could add them in here. So what's kind of fun is I can just add them on the back side of these pockets. I love that one, the earth giggles and flowers. I like a lot of these, there's a, there's a really, they're very thoughtful and fun. And I love just having them at the ready. Okay, so, <laughs> there's so many. Okay, let me put these on the other side. Oh, this pocket's getting fat for sure. So this would have definitely all fallen out without without a closure. This will be our closure for this one. So let me put some tape on it. Yeah. Yeah, Kim, I have so many printables. So with my stamp sets, I really like to keep my extras in with the stamp set so that way the next time I want to use that stamp set and I go to get it and pull it I'm like usually like oh cool I already have something made <laughs> awesome <laughs> um but then with my printables you know there's no packaging with printables there's no you've got to find a way to keep them organized okay so this is kind of going to be 
my seal for that pocket. And it just keeps stuff from falling out. Yay! I may end up going back and changing like the wallpaper. And I'm totally not stressing about the fact that I don't feel like it's wasteful, like having cut it down the way I did into four by six strips because I can use it in collaging. I can use it on my Franken paper. Like I'm not worried about it. I just wanted to see if I thought this would work. Hey Denise, welcome. How are you? Happy holidays. So glad you're here. All right, cool. This is totally gonna work for me. Um, when I get it done, I will share it with you guys again. But yeah, I wanted to use it like, so this is a printable. So it's gonna be great because um, like all these pieces, you know, all these pieces that I print, I can put them in and ooh. And then at the beginning of our live today, you guys, we made labels. So that would obviously be a good thing to put in the pockets, but I could also, where did that sheet go? I could also use my labels to label the pockets. So I could put from Mary on this. I could put the, if I use like one company's, which I do that quite a bit, like there's some Etsy shops where I, I shop there, like my porch prints and different ones. I am a repeat repeat shopper so I could put like my porch prints and that way I know where they're from by the way somebody asked me the other day um where the bohemian images of the girls came from so the cards that I made with the boho girls on them they came from ginger journals etsy.com oh Yeah, I, you know what I did this year? I made gifts or, you know, gave like journals or cards or whatever for a lot of the women in the family. And then I gave a gift card to them. If they were in a couple, then I gave a gift card for the couple. So like, um, my nieces and nephews are all like in their twenties. And so they have um, one's married and the others, you know, just have, well, might as well be married. A couple of them might as well be married. One's engaged and the other one is dating. And so I gave them, um, like a movie gift card as a couple and then gave the girls cards and journals. <laughs> so that's, that's what I did this year. I'm a big fan of date nights. <laughs> uh, so, a little something for everyone. Something special for the ladies. All right, so I know that these all came from the same principle. So then I can put all of these in a pocket together. This is gonna be fun. Lots and lots of fun. Yay. I'm glad we worked that out together. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, you hear my stomach growling? It's almost breakfast time. All right. Let's see. We, I wanted to do a little bit of color theory with you guys. Really, I just want to see what I can do with these. And the first time I used them, I couldn't get the lids off. So... I had to go to the kitchen and use my special, <laughs> my special opener to get this one open. I was never able, because I've only used these in a live once before and I was never able to get it open. So I'm just going to reshake these a little bit. I didn't put the lids on too tight because they're really hard to get off, like really hard. Okay. So let's play with the color wheel. I have these, the primary colors, obviously. So we'll just play around. I mean, I think most everyone knows the mixing for the primary colors, but I have, that's all I have these in. So I wanna stretch them and play and see uh, what we can do with them. I'm 
looking behind me and I don't have a clean palette. All of my palettes have gouache on them right now. <laughs> All right. Let's play with this. We'll use this for now. All right. Let's see, let's start with blue. Yeah, you know, they're really good for couples gift cards. I feel like couples and families, then they can get whatever they want. All right, so let's play with blue and we're gonna add blue to obviously our first two colors. Yellow, obviously we're gonna get green. So when I played with these before, I mixed them. I didn't mix them. I just put them straight onto my watercolor paper. All right, let me find brush. I guess I could have been a little more prepared. Sorry guys. Let me find a brush that I don't mind ink being on. Let's see. Ugh, whatever. Let's just use this one for now. Okay, so there's the green we get, which looks a lot like the green, obviously, from here that I got the first time. All right. So let me spray this with water. And this is watercolor paper. I'm just getting it really wet, saturated here. I'm gonna drop some of this color on. And this is what I'm liking about this ink is just when it goes on with water, just how it spreads, it kind of reminds me of alcohol ink, but without the smell. I mean, I think alcohol ink has its properties that I won't be able to get with this, but I like it. I still really like this. I'm just kind of pouncing this color around a little more. I'm going to have to get more watercolor paper out. I also like, I like just the painting with it paints very well. I am getting some like granulation here with because I mixed the colors so you can tell it's separating a little bit and that's probably because of the water. Um, so it's separating and giving some granulation of the blue and the green. I'm just gonna assume that that is because of the water and I don't mind it. I don't know what I'm gonna use this piece of paper for, but I'm sure I'll cut it down and turn it into something. It's just play time. Okay, so that one's done. Now, you can always get more variation, like if you wanted more of a blue-green, then add more blue. If you wanted more green, add more green, add more yellow. Ooh, see? This is a nice, nice color. Add a little more water. douse it. Mix these in. Oh, I really like this color. This is really pretty. You can make it go over into the stuff we did last time. Do whatever. I'm going to set this one to the side. Okay, 
so blue and yellow make green. We all know this, this is stuff we know, but it's still fun to play. I'm just cleaning that up a bit. I probably could have left it. Add just a drop of red into that. Mmm, look at that. It's like a mauve. Nice mauve color. I should be wearing like a painter's apron right now because this is about to get real messy. <laughs> okay. I'm grabbing more watercolor paper real quick. And right now I'm just using this Arteza. I've just been testing it out. I usually use Canson Nexel, but I'm using this one for now. Oh, this mauve is really pretty. So that was the green, the turquoise, plus a drop of red. So lovely. Ooh, that's a pretty color. I wanted to do this because you know, I think in card making a lot of times with inks and different things, you know, it's easy to get caught up in just wanting all the colors. I did that with a watercolor palette and, you know, I didn't want to mix them, but then the palette, it's like the colors were cool, but um, they weren't great paints. They were really inferior paints but I bought them I bought them because of the color and then I moved away from that and was like nope I'm just gonna start mixing my colors and learning my colors better so I was kind of excited to just get three colors of ink and do this kind of thing just play around and create color so I'm gonna clean up my palette a little bit Yeah, I really love this mauve. This dusty, dark rose is gorgeous. That is so pretty. And we could stamp on top of that. Mm. All right. All right. So that was us playing with blue and yellow. We made our green. Then we added a drop of red. Um, let's play with our red and yellow. So as you turn the wheel... You've got your red by adding yellow. Of course, we're gonna get an orange. Hold on, let's do red and blue. I think for this paper, I'd rather do red and blue for now. So let's do red plus blue. Obviously, we're gonna get a purple. So we'll play with this. Yes, lovely. Now, let's get this wet. The last one I did, that dusty rose color, I went wet on dry paper. Now I'm gonna go, ooh, wet on wet. I encourage you, if you're interested in watercolor and you're interested and making your own mixed media paper and things like that, just play. Just get your stuff out, whatever you might have, and play. And see what comes of it. Look, this is one to be splattered. All right. And the funny thing is, is like many times I maybe won't even really like the full sheet, but by the time you cut it down, I'll try to clean out my chart here. Uh, by the time you cut it down into smaller pieces and you're using it for cards, it takes on a whole different, you know, a look. All right, so look, now we have, okay, so we went from 
we had red, then we added blue, so we got purple. Now, if we add yellow, because this is a red-violet now that we have, our secondary color, if we add yellow, we're gonna get this really cool, like, um, burnt sienna kind of look. It is awesome to play. I love it, Noreen. I have never taken a class. It's all just play. Okay, I'm gonna add three drops. I'm gonna see what that gives us. Three drops of yellow to our, no, not enough. Okay, let me add more. I'm gonna add just a dropper. There we go. Okay, that's better. That's more like it. I think it could even use more, <laughs> more yellow. Cause I'm really wanting that, that burnt sienna look. There we go, that's better. Okay. Look, so now we have a brown. Ooh, yeah, sure, y'all can be friends. Y'all can mix together, it's fine. Okay. There's a lot of great color theory videos. There's, I can't remember her name. I've only watched one or two of her videos, but there's a lady here on YouTube who it's like what her whole channel is about. And so if you want to learn so much more about it, I would encourage you to go to one of those channels where that's like their thing. For me, I really wanted to play in a way with you guys to where maybe it wouldn't be too intimidating and it would just be a, a play session. Oh, I like this. Look how different this paper is. It's very cool. Very cool. All right. Let's let's see what else we can make here. I, I kind of don't want to waste this much ink. So let me just grab. Let's see how it does with my card front pieces. Let's see, I think this one can handle it because it's my Spring Hill digital paper. I always have these cut. I have um, a big, massive, like professional guillotine trimmer, so I can cut like 300 pages of cardstock at a time. And so I always have these cut. These are um, four by five and a quarter. But yeah, I'm just going to do some ink. This is ink smushing. All right. Just hate to waste that. If Elizabeth Costa Rogers watched this and I just wiped that up, she would be so disappointed. Just want a little more. Oh, you don't get along with paint very well, Vicki. I have always loved paint. So, um,. I <laughs> took piano lessons from a lady when I was young. And I always liked the artwork in her house. And I enjoyed the piano lessons and all, but um, one day I asked her during the piano lesson about the art. And she's like, oh, I made all of that. And I teach art classes. I was like, wait, what? Oh, next week I'm done with piano and I want to start your art classes. <laughs> Luckily, I had parents who were like, oh, okay, that's what you want to do? Like, yes. Like, piano's cool, and I wish, you know, I wish I would have stuck with it and learned it. But at the same time, like, what am I doing 30 years later? Yep, I'm playing with paint. <laughs> so, I think it was a good choice. So, the next week, we just started drawing classes together. <laughs> I think I was about seven or eight. <laughs> okay. All right. So we had this. Um, again, starting with red and adding blue, we got our purple. Then we added yellow and got our brown. 
fun, fun. Okay, now let's go back. I didn't want to do orange before, but now that I have this brown here, I think I'm fine with, uh, let's do some orange. So we're going to do red and yellow. And hide them. Well, what do you do with them, Vicki? <laughs> Kim, she would totally hunt me down and slap my wrist. Don't do that. Don't throw away all that ink. I, that was one of the things when I first found Elizabeth that I was like, oh yeah, we're alike. We don't waste. We see all that paint or ink or something on our surface and we can't just wipe it up. We've got to get the most out of it. Okay, I should have used a lot less red. For this I'm having to put in a lot of yellow to get my orange these are the things we learn right masses massive messes everywhere yeah you know I like I like a painterly mess um, but it's not for everyone okay this is gonna be a deep orange let's I, Okay, we'll do a little dry, but I really want to do wet on wet, so let's just do it. Plus, I want it to mix with that brown. There we go. Just douse it. Oh, my stomach keeps growling. I'm sorry. I don't eat first thing in the morning. I eat much later, typically. But I had a light dinner last night, so I think my stomach's thinking it's earlier than it actually is. That's a harsh line we got there, but it's okay. Let's add some color here. Okay, so if we have orange from our red and yellow Let's see, then let's go over to orange, red orange, which is what we have here. If we add more yellow, we're gonna get that. If we add blue, we're gonna get another purple. Let's do that. It's like full circle with this page. That doesn't look purple. Red, orange, plus blue, purple. We must need more blue. <laughs> you have a rainbow cat by the time you're done? I don't know. This really isn't purple. We'll just add. If purple is what I want. This is cool, though. Okay. This is cool. I like it. It's just not what I was going for. It's like a dingy gray. <laughs> A little bit of red and blue still peeking through. Let's just pick some up on. That's a pretty cool color. It's actually almost like my one of my favorite colors, which is like an army green. I don't know if it's picking up in the camera, but that's kind of what it is. That'll make a fun card base later. Okay, let's add. If I add... I'm a little worried about adding red to that. Okay, let's do a little more blue and then a little red. Let's see if we can find that purple that the color wheel told us we would get. Well, that's a different color. All right, let's pick some up. I don't even know what color this is. Oh, it's like coffee brown. <laughs> that's so funny Ooh, I like I like what's happening here that's really cool so these are all card bases you guys I think you could just put like a really great sentiment here like a funny sentiment or you could do a mask you know like a birthday for a masculine card Vicki, you could give it to your husband and say, no, I meant to do that. What are you talking about? 
That was on purpose. Oh, look at all this ink I have down here. Let's just play a little more here. I think I'm gonna disperse this with more water. Yeah. Let's just drop some color in. Ooh, that's looking cool. Let's do a little yellow. Hey, Tara. <laughs> Tara with the multicolored cat. I love it. See, this is so psychedelic. Oh, this would make a great hippie psychedelic card. 60s. If you have somebody who was born in the 60s, you can make them a birthday card with something like this. Definitely reminds me of the 60s. It's like the 60s and 70s coming together. For sure. I like to joke about the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s because it's like the 60s were like flower child and full of color and light and free. And then the 70s were like brown like 50 shades of brown and then the 80s were fluorescent it was <laughs> oh man Ooh, look at this it's almost like marbleizing so fun so you know obviously i'm just playing here and i haven't played with other brands of ink in a long time i used to do calligraphy with ink um, but that was 20 years ago and it was just India ink. So I don't know which brands are out there that can give you a similar effect, but this is acrylic ink in case you're wondering. It's from Liquitex. I bought it off Blick and that's, that's what I'm playing with here, but just a really fun way to experiment with color I have these new supplies and I want to play with them. I wonder if we have anything dry so we can make a card. You were born in 69? Oh, cool. I'm a 78 baby. Oh, that is so cool. That's a wild piece of paper, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let me soak this up. really cool isn't it I like how everything is sitting on top of the color I really wasn't expecting that but that big block of brown and that big block of orange wasn't really my thing so I had to do something I like I like it Ooh, this is a pretty color let's put this on some card bases good morning rainbow obsidian how cool I like that name yeah, we're just playing with acrylic inks right now and our color wheel. And then I'm trying not to waste any of this ink on my palette. So I've got some four by five and a quarter sheets of cardstock here that I'm pulling up pieces with. I got this yellow plate from the thrift store the other day for a quarter, you guys. <laughs> it's like, you know, I knew I needed another palette because I don't always clean mine off with the gouache now. I'll leave the gouache on and just reactivate it, especially because I mix colors that I really like and um, I don't want to waste them. So now I have a few palettes laying around that have dried paint on them and I don't want to clean them off. So I was like, ah, oh, a quarter, it's yellow, it's a triangle, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Okay, I'm gonna have to add some blue in there. I just wanted to play with these primary colors and stretch them and see what I could come up with. 
that's fun. Ooh, I'm gonna try to leave this untouched. Y'all see how this is pulling? Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to set this to the side real quick. I'm shaking, because I'm always shaking. I'm gonna set it on this stamping foam. I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm gonna see if I leave it untouched, if we'll get to keep this really cool blend. Ooh, this would make a great masculine card. My husband laughs at me, you guys, because he's always like, you think masculine, car masculine cards all have to be like geometric and abstract? And I was like, I kind of do, don't I? <laughs> I don't know. He's like, we like color. We like pattern. <laughs> Men like color and pattern. <laughs> so I'm going to set this to the side too, but only after I just do a little more. Here, let's just not be shy about it. Let's see if we can get some of this to stick. Yes, I do remember the drop. Yes, the spinner thing, absolutely. I've actually thought about, I saw one of those. I don't remember where it was, but I was like, Pfft. That would be fun for card making. That would make some fun paper for card making. It's kind of what we have going on here right now. Okay, let me see this happening here. I wanna see if I can pick it up on a thirsty little piece of white paper. And then I think we'll be done with these. I'm gonna check to see if any of them are dry so we can turn them into a card. Ooh, that's different. That kind of reminds me of a, of Africa, Noreen. Kind of looks like the African continent. All right, let me just do that there too. See what we get. Ooh, ah, nice. Yeah, this also is kind of reminding me of um, the shaving cream thing that people do where they put down like shaving cream and uh, inked up ink re-inkers, re <laughs> ink re-inkers, ink pad re-inkers. It's kind of what that was reminding me of too. This is, kind, this is also... Um, making me think of jelly printing only because once I start jelly printing, I will jelly print for hours. I mean, this is kind of like that. Like I could play, I think, with this stuff and not get bored. All right, so acrylic inks for the win. I'm a big fan. I'm glad I got to get them back out and play with them again. I just keep wanting to add. You guys, if y'all don't have acrylic inks, I'm not trying to sell you on them. Maybe try this with your your ink, re-inkers, you know. Or if you wanna buy some acrylic ink, treat yourself. all good with me. All right, this really wild piece of paper is so wet. It's wet on the front and the back. I have ink up to my elbows. Vicki, you can tell your husband that you're in good company, that Bitty Penny makes a mess too. We're going to check back in on this piece. Yeah, it's drying really cool. Look at this, you guys. I mean, it's more subtle. It does dry back. But see how all those colors got in there? Ooh. Ah. I'm a fan. Let's clean up some of this with this. <laughs> right? I used to live, one of my roommates uh, for many years, she was a high school art teacher and so she had to do her art. She was funny. She'd drink like a pot of coffee 
and stay up all Friday night and most of Saturday night doing her own, you know, paintings. And then she'd just sleep all day Sunday before school started again. <laughs> but oh man, between her and I, it's like our house was very tidy, but you could tell two artists lived there because there was paint sometimes everywhere. This is nice. This is different. I like it. I think it needs a lot of like splatter on it but it's very grungy. It, it kind of reminds me of like a Tim Holtz paper. That's what that's given me is some Tim Holtz vibes right there. That's true. Just slap some gesso on it if you don't like it. Start over. And sometimes you can keep the layers underneath that you do like so you can be selective all right guys wow that was a fun session we just had i'm so glad noreen commented on my video that i saw it since i'm not working i can actually see them and uh i knew she was online so i was like well noreen's missed the last couple of lives and i know she wanted to be at them. So thanks, Noreen. <laughs> totally Tim. Yeah, this reminds me of his like, I think it was the abandoned paper pad. You know what? I was just using it for my nephew's journal the other day right here. Because most things don't get out of arm's reach. It really reminds me of this abandoned. Yeah, paper pad. It's what that's making me think of. Very similar. I mean, this is a lot cooler, but this is a good starting place. You could emboss on these, so you could add like textured stamping once it dried. This is soaking wet, but once it's dry, you could add, um, you know, stamp on them, use embossing powder, then you could go in and use stencils and paste, and you could get this ultra grungy. The first thing I'm wanting to do is ink the outsides with like black soot or something and darken the edges. And then that will make all of this stuff come forward and really pop. So much fun. Well, that was a good time. This is the kind of stuff I like to do. Make a big old mess. All right, cleans up nicely. I have to say, cleans up very well. You might, you know, I'm, I'll probably do it. I'm probably gonna check and see how many different, you know, some of the different acrylic ink, like different companies that make acrylic ink. Maybe there's some that are a little bit more inexpensive. This one I think was a little pricey but because it was primaries and I've been into color mixing and I knew I could get just about any color from the rainbow out of my primaries, then I went for it. I think this was about, probably with tax and everything, about $20, but I'll have to do some research. Hey Debbie, welcome. I have to do some research and see if there's acrylic ink by other makers, maybe some in more budget friendly versions. I'm sure there is. They can't be the only one, right? But I like Liquitex. I use their acrylic paint. And, you know, it's a good quality. It's a good quality for sure. All right. So, um, I wanted to see if any of these are dry enough that we could turn it. This one, I really liked that one. If we can turn it into something. I like that one too. These were just me cleaning up ink. They, but I think they have potential. I think this is the driest, but it's still not quite dry. And this one's real wet. 
and obviously this one still has the color puddles on it. Really having fun. All right, I'll have to turn those into cards later. Oh, thanks, Kim. Are you working today? Are you off this? I hope you're off all week long. You work so hard. You and I are always working. So I hope you're off and having some crafty fun all of your own. Okay, I don't want to stack that one because it's even got ink on the back. Let's clean that up. All right, you guys, that was a really fun session. I hope you guys had fun too. Just to kind of recap, we made some labels with a stamp set. Then that I can't seem to find for some reason. I, I don't know where they went so quickly. I have like little gnomes or fairies that just scurry off with my stuff so quick. All right. So we took this um, stamp set and we made labels. I made one for my new glue bottle. Oh, good, Kim. I hope you enjoy your time off. Um, so I made this label for my glue bottle so y'all know what kind of glue I'm using. I made it with this stamp set and this may, may made it. You can get alpha stamp sets from from anywhere okay so we made a whole bunch that said like journal <laughs> I just don't know where they went okay then we took this photo album I took the pages out and I'm turning this into an album with pockets to hold my ephemera and stuff and this is all like printables and handmade stuff. There's another label that we made, but not one that says journal. And then it'll hold my printables. I have so many. It'll be nice to have that. I've been thinking about like making a binder where every time I purchase a printable and down, oh, even my little file folders will fit in there. Like if I print and cut out a bunch of these, this one's assembled, but the ones that aren't assembled, then I could just pop them in here. This is going to be very handy. Um, but yeah, I've thought about making a binder where every time I purchase a printable, I print it up and put it in my binder so I know what I have. Because otherwise they just kind of get lost in my printer in the digital world. Hey there, TR. Welcome. Oh, you have a lot of your art supplies packed up. Mm, I'm sorry. We know they want to come out and play, don't they? Uh, then we made, we took our color wheel and we took our primary colors and acrylic ink and we just made a mess. But it was a fun mess this page. It's not terribly interesting, but at least it's a jumping off point. Again, we just cut this down to whatever sizes we want and we could come in and stamp on top of it. And then suddenly you do have something interesting. Since I have a puddle here. I'll add a little more blue. Spread it around add some interest just feels kind of kind of dull there all green blob now it has a blue blob looks like a spider kind of descending down from its web we won't get into psychology here I'm not qualified all right so this is what we did we made a big old mess and it was lots of fun. I thought we'd make some cards, but it just isn't dry yet. Oh, you are Kim. Well, at least you have that layer 
a protection. And like Noreen said, I hope you get to fill in better. Look at this. So this one, I keep we keep checking in on this one, but it's looking pretty cool. I really like that it pulled in those colors. And then this wild child here, it's still drying, obviously, but I really like what's happening. And this one isn't, so this one had the same kind of lines in detail, um, but it's kind of evening out and I like it. I like the softness of the colors that are coming in. I'm trying to hold it so that y'all can see the colors. Lots of fun, you guys. Okay, let's see, this week, this week. Um, well, I have like four <laughs> junk journal videos edited and ready to go. They're already uploaded. I have a card making video on Christmas Eve and I'll probably do a live again. I was thinking Christmas Eve. I don't know. Maybe for 45 minutes or an hour I'll have to set a timer. Because otherwise I could just keep going. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about doing one. I know not everyone can travel to be with their family. Um, so I thought companionship here. We, we connect all year. I want to be here on the holidays a little bit too. I know, I know Debbie, we were joking earlier that Elizabeth might hunt me down for doing something like that, wiping up that blue ink that could have totally been used. But you know, if I don't stop myself, this is really cool. If I don't stop myself at some point, then um, then I'll just keep going indefinitely. Yeah, actually, so all of these pages came from me smushing because I couldn't, I had a whole bunch of paint on my palette and I was like, oh, I just can't wipe that up. So that's where a lot, all of these came from. <laughs> they, they were my cleanups. We'll turn them into something for sure. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. If um, if there's something that y'all want to see on my channel, let me know. Because uh, I'm just a, a free agent going forward. So I have one last design team video for Not Too Shabby on Christmas Eve. Then I am sticking to Call Me Crafty Owl's sheet load of cards. Um, but besides that... It's going to be a whole lot of play, a whole lot of busting the stash. I do have my own um, collaborative team I've put together for 2022, and we're going to be bringing inspiration to y'all um, as well for old and new techniques and supplies and all the things. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about 2022. I wish you all well. If I don't see y'all again before the holidays, Merry Christmas to those who celebrate the birth of Christ and um, Happy New Year as well to everyone around the world. I love you guys so very much. I'm so glad y'all are here. I'm glad that I'm here and I'm glad we get to share. So yeah, have a beautiful day and I will see you guys next time. Bye.